and welcome back to another episode of Total Control with SD Wesker. It's the uh, third video I've actually recorded uh, this morning. So usually I get a bit of a chance to have a break and stuff, but I don't have that at the moment, which is a bit annoying um, because usually if I find myself on tilt, and I feel like I was a bit tilted in the last match, just because I know for a fact that there's it's not like there's anything dodgy going on. We are just not taking our chances at the moment, and it is so frustrating because you know that there's something you can do but you just don't know what it is. So we've got to try and figure that out today. I think, in all honesty, we've been giving our opponents too much credit and allowing them too much of the ball. So we made some changes towards the end of the last episode, and I'm actually going to move the balance, uh, the mentality to positive because I feel like we're just... We're giving up too much of the ball for no apparent reason. It's about time we switched off the narrow defensive width and moved to something a bit wider because... Maybe that would work if we were playing like a back three, but I just don't think that what we're doing is really having an effect. And maybe we should try and cut things off at the source because as a result of that, we might then, you know, have more of an opportunity to get tackles in earlier. Maybe up the pressing game a little bit. We've got to find a way to stop them from getting touches in our box. And I think we're, that's part of the problem. We're allowing them to play around too much with the ball. So maybe a bit more of an urgent press, not too much might just make a little bit of a difference maybe get stuck in on them a little bit more maybe try and be a bit more aggressive but i do still want the dm i think we're better with the dm also i've, I've come to notice here that javi galan actually has a higher rating for this than galar uh, gaia so i want to see a, a, do a quick comparison between the two see what the differences are and maybe we've been playing the wrong player all this time there is that as a potential feature here gaia is quite simply better at the technical attacking vision speed but galan has got way better attributes in other areas. So we'll see. He's got better finishing Gaia, which is useful, but he hasn't actually shown that off that much other than those friendlies. Uh, better heading for Galan, which is interesting. He's got good long throws, but that's not important. We're going to sort out some throw-ins as well. He's got better passing, which could definitely help, actually, because I think one of the problems with Gaia, he gets the ball into good positions, but then he doesn't do the right thing with it. And I don't know if maybe he's got poor decisions or not. Uh, it's certainly worse, but not that bad. He's good at penalties, not that important. He's worse in the tackle. They're both left-footed. Uh, the height is basically the same. It's a bit more anticipatory. Um, way less determination. Much better decisions as well. It's a bit more of a leader. Better positioning. Better teamwork. Better work rate too. Getting up and down that wing. Pace is basically the same. And acceleration. He's got better balance and more natural fitness. A little bit lost. I kind of just feel like he might be the one. And he's a resolute personality. He likes big matches. He's consistent. I just, I don't know. I think maybe we've been playing the wrong one. And it's taken me a little while to realise this. And this is what I mean. I'm going to do some proper, a bit more of an in-depth look soon. And I, I think it's time for Gaia to be dropped out because his performances have not been good enough. And I think Ga Galan has just not been given a shot. And that's my fault. It's going to bring Rivero uh, back in here. Obviously, we've got plenty of time because we've... Well, not that much time. It's on Tuesday, the next match. But you see what I mean. It's going to take a little while for us to adjust to the changes. I want to work ball of the box. I want to mix crosses, I think. Because I think having too much designated into, onto the style of cross might be what's causing our players to not cross the ball as much. With mixed crosses, they're more likely, I think, to pick the right cross rather than try to force their way into the, the same types of crosses all the time. There's certain scenarios that work better than that, and then maybe that's what we need to be doing a bit more. As for throw-ins, honestly, I want to start treating them a bit more like a set piece. And this is the only way I think we can do that. What I'm going to do, essentially, is just have a player randomly here. I'm going to have this guy probably do a long throw, though. Do we even have a good long throw? This is the thing. Do we have good long throws or not? Acapo is great for the long throws on the right. On the left, though, on the right, we're sort of... Then again, he doesn't actually have to take the long throw long. He just has to to try. Musto could take it, actually. But we'll leave the fullbacks back, have a guy lurking, send the centre-backs forward, basically, and just try and lob a long throw at them. Just see what happens, really. We're not actually going to be going to the far post. Maybe have the striker here instead. So we have the centre-back here to try and win a flick on, perhaps? I don't know. Galan might be able to pick up some scraps or something. I don't know. And we don't want the DM taking it on the left-hand side. And I probably want my striker here. Yeah, actually, no, we'll leave that as that is. That's kind of how I want. Oh, of course it is, because I just switched it over, didn't I? Uh, but what we do want is to change the takers. Because the thing is, I see a lot of our final third opportunities start with throws, but we take it short, and then we just... I mean, not the, these will often go short as well, but we're at least going to try to get them to take them long. So we can just throw some stuff into the mix and cause a bit of chaos, to be honest. You know, win a few little headers, flick-ons, something, just to create some chaos in their box. Now, obviously, a lot of highlights start with throw-ins because often the ball is going into an attacking area and that triggers the highlights and the ball often starts in the final third. So again, it triggers the highlights. But still, we want to make the most of these opportunities, I feel like. Now, training between now and then is going to be a bit difficult because we've literally got a recovery session today, or tomorrow rather, which makes sense. And then on the day of the day before... I'm going to do a match prep, defending free kicks. I think we just kind of have to treat this like the meme it is now. Imagine if we lost every single game this season 1-0, for example. This episode may well feature the Barcelona game as well, depending on how much time we have, because 
that one it's not going to require so much analysis because I just don't think there's any hope for us in that game. So Miero played well again. And honestly, Torre looked decent when he came on in that game as well. Hernandez just wasn't getting into good positions. And I actually do wonder that maybe Camacho took away from him a little bit. <laughs> Another ridiculous tactic. Okay. There's a lot of uh, varying tactics in this league. What I would say, though, is, again, it's going to give us space in the wide areas to get balls into the box because they're not going to have wide players that can take on both of our wide players. Still, one wi one victory, and we're, ri we're right back in the battle. And I think that the goal difference thing that we're trying to keep down, uh, there's keeping it down and there's doing what we're doing. <laughs> okay, so we won a an under-19s game playing the same tactic. That seemed to look a little bit, little bit more fresh. So looking at later in the week here, we're going to have a recovery after that, which makes sense. Um, attacking team, match preview, fine. I want to put in another um, match prep one here for defensive shape. And maybe one... We're going to wean off of this stuff once we get out of September and start to work on some more technical things. Work on some more defensive side of stuff here with Barcelona in mind. And then we've got a nice little rest coming up to Villarreal. Okay, so the last game was a 3-1 defeat. And they've actually scored a decent number of game goals in their last nine games, in fairness. But we'll take a closer look at this when we get into the match. Yeah, that's actually a good point. We're gonna, we, we are going to be resting, Guy R, so it makes sense for us to say this here. Hmm. Aguilera actually liked that for some reason. So it's the centre-back from Zaragoza. I mean, the thing is, it's, it's a good price and everything. We'll just add him to the shortlist because we can't afford it right now. Handle briefing. Go on. Nope, they're not into that. We can't win here, can we? Go on, get stuck in on them. The squad liked the idea of getting stuck in. That's good. I feel like we've been a bit too reserved, in all honesty. And I think we need to actually just try and go out and score some goals. Because it just ain't happening in any other senses right now. So Hernandez, Galan, Juanpi, Miero, Rivera, Musto, Jose Angel, Etcheta, Insua, and Walker Peters. Uh, yeah, that's all right for us right now. Some of the injury risk is starting to get a little bit high, though. So we've got to be careful. We can rest players in all honesty for Barcelona. Because I just don't see us getting anything from the game, no matter what we do. I'm actually tempted to start Luis Senior for today. So the, their width is going to have to come from the wingbacks, which is fine. But that is going to give us some options. Deep line playmaker. But that's going to leave gaps, surely. So... When they played Espanyol, they lost 3-1. Where was that? How were they able to concede those goals? Quite a balanced lineup, which I guess kind of makes sense. Particularly on this right-hand side, though, Koke seemed to be the one for that. Positional heat map. They kept the ball a lot in the defensive areas, in fact, it would see. Passing network is very much forcing the ball out to this right-hand side for the 12. So getting Koke involved. Yeah, you can see Koke's made a lot of the key passes here. We don't know as much about Valladolid, other than that they actually went more down the left in this one. And again, it was more left-sided despite Koke, but Koke again played well. Hmm. I mean, it does kind of indicate that it would do the thing I want it to do. My concern with the hit early crosses thing is that I want players to be in good positions before they cross the ball. My issue in the last match was that they were getting into good positions and then not crossing the ball. They would take too long once they were gotten there, what I would consider to be a good position anyway. But I feel like this would have them sh crossing it before they get into those good positions and maybe from slightly more ineffectual areas, slightly deeper. So I, I don't know. We'll try work bottom of the box and it, well, you can always try this out later in the half maybe. Capania is definitely going to be marked up today. Uh, we're obviously going to show him onto his weaker foot. Now, for the fullbacks, it's going to be a case of since we're going to be... Def uh, no, we're not going to... Are we going to defend wider? Since we are, it would probably make sense for us to go and press these guys as well. Like, I think the narrow defensive thing is actually quite... It works quite well. The problem with it is that when we clear our lines, it's falling back to them. Whereas if we press them a bit more, we have a chance of winning possession off of them rather than just winning the ball back. We actually get the ball in better areas then. And maybe winning the ball in the final third a little bit more might allow us to create some more counter-attacking opportunities, perhaps. I just want to see more from us today. I want to see us getting that ball out wide, actually being a bit more proactive with things. That's why I've put Luisinho in, because he's a more attack-minded player as well. But let's just see how things go, really, shall we? Watch us lose this one 4-0 and it will... Show that actually it wasn't really the defensive side of the, it wasn't the attack. Oh god, oh bloody! <laughs> I'm this close to going to the bakery again, you know. One minute fifty. Well, we might as well switch to cautious now because we're going to be on the back foot. I don't believe. I do not believe this. Okay, well this is going to be a long day. <laughs> oh, this is such a meme. Now, obviously, the getting stuck in on the higher, the more pressing approach has definitely had something to do with that. But my lord, wasn't quite what I had in mind. Watch this be our best performance of the season or something. Quampy, ball in. Oh, Rivera. Echetta, blocked. The possession is still pretty decent. Out wide for Galan again. It's got an overlap as well from Luisinho. Ball across. Hernandez, blocked. And it's another corner. Quampy, good looking behind. Ah, that's where those balls need to be played. In behind. Luisinho forward again. Galan. Could have a little run inside here. Slip one through for someone, maybe. Malero. Look out wide again. Here we go. Quampy. Goes for goal. And it's going to be another corner. I'm actually going to move the uh, uh, the mentality back to positive because we've got so much of the possession. We might as well make the most of it. Malero. Go on. Oh. 
My God, what a first half. Luisinho, cutting through. Can he find the shot? It's Chetta, no. Luisinho, Milero, round the post. We're playing so well in this first half. We'll still end up losing, but we're playing so much better. It's it's brilliant. And this is with 10 men. Oh, for Luisinho. It's the most shots we've had in the game, that's for sure. Juanpi, great save on the rebound. No! Oh, God, what a chance. I wonder if Galan's involvement had any effect in that too. Because he's I've definitely seen him doing things. But there's other changes that we've made as well. So we can't blame it all on... Um, put it, oh, God. Oh, wow. What a first half. Very, very even game. But we've got a lot more of the football. And that's with 10 men. Uh, Insua's been sensational. And Juanpi's been brilliant too. Luisinho as well. And I actually think that Juanpi's going to have to be asked to do a defensive job in the second half. It's incredible how many of the games we've had this season have been nil-nil at half time and then have still ended up. But this one I'm much more confident with. I think we just need to be more proactive. And that's what we've done. Considering how much we waited with bated breath for Hernandez to return to the team, we've not seen him score a goal or do anything really of note. I think he had one chance in one game that I remember. Pedro Lopez, ball in. Domina! It's a difficult chance for him. Points tally and all that. But given the circumstances, it would be a fantastic result. Vezo. But I'm sure we'll find a way to concede from a free kick or something. You know how it is. And this will be the one. Bardi. Oh my god, it bloody was. It bloody what? I don't believe... I can't. Oh, you've got to be shitting me. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, okay. We must prowl on. And as usual, it's in the back of the net. We even trained defending free kicks before this one. We've messed around with the free kick instructions to what to do. I don't know. I wish my uh, prediction skills worked in our favour sometimes. Galan, Bardi. Oh, now it's two. Ennis Bardi makes it two, and we have now conceded another goal. That's a really good finish from Bardi, but unfortunately at half-time, they've obviously sorted themselves out a little bit. It's still a... a a long range effort but regardless maybe Musto can get in there and close that down if we've got him on the pitch but the moment this comes to Bardi here he's just able to peel off and side it's an excellent finish from Bardi and yeah this one's done I was so hopeful at half time so hopeful I'm taking Quampy off of marking a specific player now because I feel like that was probably actually limiting him a little bit more than I would have liked it to well at least it's not going to be one nil <laughs> so there's that I suppose right change has got to be made uh, Hernandez has been woeful again Gallego's going to come in Galant obviously I've not been that impressed with him but we, yeah, we rested Gaia completely. In fact, screw it. We're going to make three subs here just to freshen the entire team up because nobody's really looking that in. They've improved as the game's gone on. Uh, we had our moments in that first half and it just, yeah, just didn't happen for us. And then Galan takes a shot for Rivera. Hello. Juanpi! <gasps> like, there's been chance, there's been opportunities today. I, I hate to say chances because, of the, you know, chances are countless like else in FM. But I mean, opportunity-wise, we've actually had some. Juanpi! Galan! Luisinho! Oh! Got to do something. It's always. Gallego. He's through. Yes! Enric Gallego, the man of the moment, grabs us a goal back. It means nothing. But the fact that this game is 2-1 two, is two one when we have 10 men, I think it's showing us a lot about what we need to be doing. Great ball through from Toure. I think he needs to be playing a bit more. Lovely ball from Gallego. Where was these runs before? I think Toure and the team makes a huge difference in picking out those kind of balls. Come on! Right. We might still have a chance. Gaia Toure. Oh, this has fallen to Luisinho in a few little spots here. He's, he's had that a few times. <gasps> Wampi! Oh, no! I've just switched um, Insua over to being a, a ball-playing defender. Just since he might as well be. Luisinho. Toure. Round the side for Galan. Can he put it across for someone? Oh, my God. Gaia Toure does really well there. Galan. Gaia Toure over the top for Gaia goes through. No! Why wouldn't you just fucking shoot? Oh, my God. That was the chance. I can't believe how close we came to, to level things up there. Gallego, though, I think he's the man for this. The fact that he scored the goal and he nearly scored the second one, and he should have, unfortunately. He didn't even get the shot away. All he has to do is fire that past the goalkeeper, or at least have the shot. Insua, that's it. More like it. He's having a little run. Quampy, look it inside. Torres there. Gallego needs to make the run, and he has again. Gallego's through again. Can he finish? Oh, no. Well, I don't know anymore. I just don't know. The chances we've actually created them tonight, we've been superb from an attacking perspective. To create those, the amount of opportunities and Gallego just hasn't put the bastards in the net. It's still going to be a defeat though, by the odd goal. Five consecutive league defeats, all by one goal. But we looked so much better in that game and Gallego should have scored another goal. He had to score at least one more of those. Yeah, I'm saying there's no way that's a red card. Must have been banned for one match. We're going to appeal anyway. God damn. So, so, so close to stuff happening. That Like, it wasn't that 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 game. I don't know. <laughs> like, we had the chances. Actual really bona fide chances in that game. And they just didn't put them away. Interestingly, that changed when I went to hit early crosses. So we might try that in future. 
Musto doesn't like the fact that I said it shouldn't have been a red card because reasons. Toure was brilliant in that game. Utterly brilliant. And we should have done way better. He paid four key passes. The other change I want to make is I think Ensua actually does deserve to be playing as a ball-playing defender. He gives us something a little bit different then. He can run with the ball out from the back into little gaps that they wouldn't normally make. So we're basically guaranteed to lose six and it's... It's the way it is. But I think I saw some good stuff in that. Like, in the other games, like, we were looking solid defensively. This one weren't quite so solid in places. Although, to be honest, the goals were conceded, the free kick and a long-range strike. We still didn't look too bad. And I think maybe if we'd had the full complement of players. Oh, I've been warned by the FA. Got to be careful here, lads. We're probably going to play defense, uh, defensive against Barca. It's really the only option we've got. Okay, so Yaya Ture and Nilmar are pleased with my talk there. Okay, pretty much briefing. None of our shots are attempted from outside the area. That's not really an issue. It's honestly hard to know with this situation, really, isn't it? Like, maybe counter? The squad don't really seem to know what they want. <laughs> but they did like one of the things I said. And again, look at the training. The training is really now starting to sight to look a lot nicer. We've got a lot of very good trainers. And that is pleasing me to no end. Camacho, not so much. They are also not training well. But mostly, it's important to praise the guys that are doing well. And these guys are. It's going to take them a little while to get used to some of the changes in the tactic too, so fair play. I think just giving some of these guys a little extra to do has made a difference. I don't understand why Gallego missed those, really. He's got good finishing, first touch, he's composed, he's, like, I don't know, just annoying. And he dreads playing in big matches. And uh, they've upheld the ban, that's annoying. Okay, Barcelona, we are obviously expected to lose this game. It is a total free hit, which is not ideal. I'm going to start Nilmar today because Juan Hernandez has not impressed me. Gallego, I want to give him a little break. But I also want to see if us doing a similar style of play with Nilmar instead, who's got slightly better attributes than that role, might work better. Because he's a slightly better player than Gallego. Juanpe and Gal Galan, he didn't exactly cover himself in glory there. I'm going to bring Gallar back in for today as well. I'm also going to start Yaya Toure instead of Galero, uh, Malero. Luisinho will keep his... Uh, actually, no. I'm going to bring Jose and Hell in because Luisinho, more of an attack-minded player, is Barcelona. So, those are the changes. Early crosses is now on, particularly against Barcelona. Uh, how do you get rid of this? It's a pain in the arse, it won't go away. There you go. And it's is a ball playing defender because I just wanted to have the opportunity to run into space if he sees any, you know? But we're still going to take this game seriously, though. Barcelona. Right. So they've got no designated playmaker, but they do have Usman Dembele and Messi as inside forwards. So they're going to be cutting towards our defence with the wingbacks overlapping both of them, it would seem, with Luis Suarez up top. They're positive and fluid. No surprises there. Analyst report. Good Christ. Um, very balanced approach to this, essentially. So when they played Sevilla, it was mostly down the wings. Positional heat map, particularly with the left back as well. Alba, Sergio Roberto didn't get in the game as much. And balls into that channel. So they have conceded a few goals, mostly from crosses. Interesting. They also, they've also scored 29 times so far this season already. Particularly on the, the right wing as the assist location. So Messi. I, I mean, what do you do, really? Like, I think we've got to go after Messi and Dembele as they're both inside forwards. Um, sh do that. And then Alba, I actually think we're going to mark Alba up a little bit more. Because that seems to be what Ter Stegen's doing. Pinging the balls out to Alba. And hopefully, if we put someone like Juanpi on him, he doesn't even have to win the challenges. Just be close enough to him to the point where he can win some tackles with him. But at the end of the day, let, let's be honest. It's Barcelona. This is not one of these games we'd expect to get stuff from. And it's just frustrating that we haven't got any points coming into this point of the season. But I saw a lot of encouraging signs against Levante. Because we did that with 10 men, remember? Let's go. Maybe someone can step up and be a hero today. I know, like, dropping Gallego after he scored our only goal of the season is quite a risk. But Nilmar, I think, operates in a similar style and has slightly better composure, perhaps. So maybe it could be useful in sewer. So this is what I mean. When he gets the ball here, he can push through the middle of those two uh, forward players and just open up the pitch for himself a little bit more. Walker Peters now. We've got a short option here. They've not come to close us down. Well, he does take the short option on. Gaia! Oh, and we've had a header. Messi's ball. Insua clears. Gaia can win it away, and Nilmar does pick it up. Gaia. That's it. Finally, some space to run into. Nobody's closing him down at all. He's got to find a cross. Oh, my God. Just cross the ball. Sergio Roberto. Everybody's kind of marked up at the moment, which is not too bad. Jordi Alba. <laughs> oh, well, there are always penalties. We know that. So, well, there you go. Uh, <laughs> I suppose it is Barcelona. But Dow will step up and take, and it's down the middle. 1 0 to Barcelona. Uh, they've won probably and are going to win six out of six so far this season. And we couldn't just not do that, could we? Nope. Okay, so half time, and we, we do trail to Barcelona. But what I would say, right, for Barcelona, they're not playing that well, really. They've had five of their eight shots have been from range. They scored only the penalty. Like, this is a pretty encouraging performance again. One change I think I am going to make, though, is Gaia's on a booking and he's really struggling and maybe giving Luisinho a chance in the second half. 
this might be the type of game again uh, Gallego could come off the bench and if he was to do something again off the bench then I'd have to look at him being our main man from now on because you've got to go to where the goals are and he made the runs as well. That's another key factor in those games. Like, Toure was able to put those balls through because he made the runs. Nilmar has made a couple, though. Ball in. Oh, we just can see from a corner now. Penalty, corner. Ugh. Deary me. <laughs> Takes it short for Jose. Hell. Find the ball in. Toure! Yes! It's in the back of the net and we've scored a goal again. Wait, what? Oh, okay, sure. Yaya Toure with the goal. Gerard Piquet has been credited with it, but we've scored a goal against Barcelona now. I don't know why that's an own goal. Is this not going in? Ball across. To oh, I see. It hits the defender, then comes back and hits Piquet and goes in. We've scored a goal. Sergio Roberto. Oh, my. Oh, dear. <laughs> what a bloody goal from Sergio Roberto. You've got to hold your hands up sometimes and be like, what are you supposed to do about that? That's just a pure having players that are much better than you type of goal. What about this for a finish? He's so far out. He has no right to score from there. No goalkeeper in the world's going to keep that out. It's an insane goal. Luisinho. Can he find one? Oh, he's, got, he's just about got round his man. Gallego. He's through. Gallego, can he finish? What a save from Ter Stegen. And we should have had a second goal. Gallego's had chances now, but he's getting in the position. The way Messi keeps the ball is un is godly. Look at this. Semedo. In sewer. Oh my god. <laughs> the goals they're scoring are just classic Barca type goals. In fact, they're not even classic Barca type goals. They're just, what was it? We've had a penalty, a free kick, uh, sorry, a penalty, a corner, a long range belter, and this time it's an incredibly good volley from Sergio Roberto. He's headed away, and he's just gone, you know what? Have that. I <laughs> just, that, that's Barca for you. Gallego makes the run again. He's in behind for another time. Can he finish it again? Goes for the strike and Ter Stegen makes the save. But again, Yaya Torre, ball over the top. Who was there? But Gallego. Jose Angel. Touch out of his feet. Luisinho with the strike. Oh my God. Another good chance there. Well, it looks like it's going to be a 4-1 defeat at home to Barcelona, which, you know, is probably what you would have expected. Um, but we had some decent opportunities. We scored a goal, albeit, you know, the own goal in there. Gallego had some good chances in this match again. That Toure ball over the top to Gallego has definitely got legs, though. In the last two matches, I've seen him do it four times, or five times, rather. And Gallego, okay, he's only scored one of them, but we keep doing that. He will find the net on more of these occasions. If we just keep training him for it, I think that's our way through, teams, to be honest. Um, yes, okay, we conceded four goals today. Penalty corner and two outrageous goals from Sergio Roberto. Not every team is going to be able to do that to us, so I still think there are some benefits to us going forward. We're still not that far off the pace despite those six games in a row. Have the faith, guys. We've got to keep the faith. The win will come eventually, and then hopefully we can build on that and start gaining some points up the table. We're still not far off. One win pulls us right back into the battle. We've got to get it soon, though. Oh, it's not happy reading, is it? At least we won that cup match. That's the main thing, isn't it? So, Next episode is going to be uh, Villarreal and Cadiz, maybe. I, I don't really know how we're going to plan that one out. Uh, it might just be Villarreal with Cadiz and Espanyol on the next one after that, so we can do a bit more of deeper analysis in the Villarreal game going into that. Because that's still going to be a tough old away match in there, to be fair. So, if you've enjoyed this episode and think we're moving sort of in the right direction, uh, then drop a like, that'd be cool. And I'll join you guys in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.